So let's, uh, let's get started, um, nine o'clock. So welcome to How I Stopped Worrying and Learned to Love Open Source. Uh, much like when a new team kicks off a, a new project, the first thing you do is design the t-shirt. One of the things I, I do when I decide what I want to talk about at a conference is come up with an interesting title. For some reason, Dr. Strangelove kept on sticking in my mind. Um, and for those of you who do not know, How I Stopped Worrying and Learned to Love the Bomb is the subtitle of, of the movie Dr. Strangelove. I was actually toying of uploading that uh, picture as my headshot to Apache because I think that would have been pretty funny, but uh, didn't know if that strained the, the fair doctrine use. <clears throat> so what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about, first I'm going to let you know a little bit about uh, where I come from. I'm going to talk about uh, why we uh, made the move to an Apache Tomcat-based application server for our product. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the extensions we've made to Apache uh, in order to run in our environment, and I'm going to wrap up with some lessons um, that we learned in the process. Um, I've got more slides here than I'm going to have time to present, and I think the demos will be a little more interesting, so some of this stuff I'm going to skip over pretty quickly. Also, um, I do have some very hairy technical details about uh, the stuff we did to Spring Security um, that are hidden from the presentation but are included in the slides if you do download them. So first I want to do a disclaimer. Uh, some of the things um, we decided, you may say, why are you doing that? Um, the choices we made were, were made um, for, for our requirements and, and certainly are not going to be, may not be correct for you. So take what I say as not what you should do, but as what we did. So I want to, it's been a while since I actually talked to a group that wasn't uh, part of our, our user community, so I, I'm going to be probably using some terms that you aren't, aren't familiar with, so I wanted to get them out in advance. Uh, when I say PaaS, I'm talking about the Progress Application Server. Uh, this is a, um, um, an application server based on Tomcat that um, contains a core set of, of capabilities that we use for different products within our company. Uh, PaaS OE is the specific flavor of the app server that we use uh, for OpenEdge, which is the division I work for. ABL stands for Advanced Business Language. Um, I wouldn't put this on the slide, but it really is the 21st century marketing term for 4GL, which is where our company uh, comes from. An ABL application, and this is important. Um, <clears throat> inside Tomcat, um, we, we support multiple ABL applications, and an ABL application can contain one or more web applications running inside an instance. Um, and this, you know, does generate some challenges for us, especially in the in the in um, in things like logging and things like that that I'll be getting into. So, who are we? Well, Progress was first introduced at Comdex 1983. So to give you some idea of uh, some of the other things that were, were announced at that Comdex, which is actually quite famous, PC-DOS 2.1, uh, that came out. And the reason that came out is because the IBM PC Junior was also announced. Finally, the big one, Microsoft Windows was announced, even though it would be a few years before it would actually ship. And finally, a um, machine 30 years ahead of its time, the Cardiff Electric Giant, which is a joke for those of you who watch Hell and Catch Fire. So, August 1984, we shipped our first version of Progress 2.2. Um, it wasn't completely due to the fact that nobody would buy version one of a product uh, back in those days, but, uh, <laughs> but that was our first version we shipped. Um, it did change from the original 1.0 that we did announce. So some, uh, some of the timeline that happened since that original announcement, um, I joined Progress in 1994. Um, in 1998, we introduced our Progress app server, um, which I, I worked on, and that was our, what I'm going to refer to as our classic app server. Uh, that was in version 9 of our product. Um, in 2003, uh, we rebranded our product from Progress to OpenEdge um, and uh, released OpenEdge app server 10.0. In 2014, we released our first version of our Progress application server based on Tomcat. And that was in our OpenEdge 11.5 release, and that was based on Tomcat 7. And finally, last month, uh, we released um, version 11.7 of our product, uh, which is uh, now based on Tomcat 8.5. So first thing I want to do is uh, show you what our classic app server architecture looked like so you can see the bar that we had to meet in order to um, create this product. So our, our product consists of a, um, our core app server consists of a broker process that's written in Java and a pool of agents, which are native code. Um, each agent can support one ABL session. And normally, you hook up to a database. Um, with, these, um, with this core, we supported um, 
or a, an ABL client, as well as some open clients, uh, Java, and at that time, ActiveX, which has since been replaced with .NET. Then came the servlets. So our first servlet we did was our App Server Internet Adapter, or AIA. And it just basically tunnels, H, tunnels our App Server protocol over the HTTP protocol. Uh, this was well before the Tomcat days uh, when I did this, and um, did give me the first opportunity to write an HTTP client in C. And also, um, this was the days of uh, servlet exec and JRun. Uh, so, uh, what do you know? One of those um, servlet containers actually didn't uh, support uh, chunking at the time, HTTP chunking at the time, so I had to write some hacky code around it so no one, when our messages ended, um, coming back. And um, just uh, last month, a customer reported a bug in that old hacky code that uh, showed up uh, uh, due to changes in our, our message structure over, over the years. Next, we uh, created a SOAP adapter for web services. Um, and it's based on Apache SOAP. And it still is based on Apache SOAP today. And by Apache SOAP, I don't mean Apache Access. I mean Apache SOAP. Um, in fact, I, I bet you we probably are the biggest um, our community is probably the biggest user of Apache SOAP out in the wild today, I would think. Um, I'm sure everyone else moved to Access over those years. And finally, um, more recently, uh, we created our REST adapter uh, when we uh, were doing our mobile work. Um, and this is a more modern based um, architecture based on Camel and CXF. We also had some, uh, some ancillary processes. Uh, we had an admin server. It's required for our app server. It, it manages, um, you know, starting, stopping, managing, and all those other things. Um, it uses RMI to communicate with everything, uh, which is one of the reasons uh, why we moved away from this. Uh, we also created a name server. It uses UDP and um, allows uh, clients to find uh, where the app server is located based on an app service name. And last, uh, we also had a, a web application server. This actually predated um, our, our um, delivering our, our regular application server called WebSpeed. Um, and it's, um, it's based on the same architecture, but it uses a completely different agent process that um, uses a completely different uh, model. Uh, whereas our normal app server is an RPC-based model, this one is a streaming-based model uh, designed for the web. So why do we develop a new app server? Well, our current app server wasn't really designed for the cloud. I mean, we do have customers you know, running it up on Amazon and what have you, but uh, due to all the things like RMI, admin server, things like that, um, it wasn't ideal for the cloud, especially in a high transaction, you know, you want to bring servers up and down stuff. Um, also, it, um, since it was all proprietary, uh, we didn't work well with third-party tools. Um, we lacked integrated security. Um, for most of our uh, life cycle, we've, um, we've given our customers some tools to, to implement security, but it's really up to them to implement it for their applications. Uh, we started um, with uh, Spring Security Framework uh, when we released our REST adapter, and we were able to extend that over um, to all our transports. It was not standards-based, I talked about that. And we wanted a single application server platform for multiple, platform, for multiple products. Um, outside of OpenEdge, we, we, we have some other uh, products. Um, QuarterCon is a business rules management system, and RollBase is an APAS development environment. All these are Java-based, and they we didn't want everyone using their own version of Tomcat and, and, um, and, and uh, customizing it and having to support multiple versions. So we wanted a single platform that we can use throughout the company. So deciding on a platform, well, our first choice wasn't Tomcat. Um, we decided to go with Eclipse Virgo with Tomcat and um, for many reasons. Uh, we did a, a scorecard on uh, different application servers and Tomcat wasn't even considered because you know, at that time, we knew Tomcat. Tomcat was the boring, safe choice. You know, it wasn't the fun, new, exciting thing. So we, we were going to go with Eclipse Virgo, and the reasons why? Well, performance. Uh, first test we did with getting some of our um, legacy code into Eclipse Virgo showed it was actually um, better performing than just straight Tomcat, which was surprising. I uh, don't know why. Um, the OSG architecture, I mean, what architect doesn't love that? Uh, the, the control you get, you know, your users aren't going to screw up your system. You know, you've got full control. Everything's locked down. Um, the administrative console, you know, these are things that we wouldn't, wouldn't have to write ourselves uh, but are required uh, for a uh, commercial application server. A spring integration. It was already done. Um, and built-in diagnostics for when what things go wrong. So a few months into the project, uh, we, we switched to Tomcat. 
And the reasons why? Well, difficulty is getting legacy code to run. Um, we weren't coming into this with, with a, you know, writing a completely new code base. We were coming into this with a huge number of, of legacy lines of code that we needed to get run in the platform and be compatible uh, with, with our other products. Uh, pushback from other groups. Um, the other uh, products I mentioned, Cordicon and Rollbase, uh, they weren't too happy with OSGI because they had some experience with it. Uh, we didn't. <laughs> Uh, so um, one of the uh, goals of this was to have a common platform, and if we chose uh, Virgo, um, these other groups may have said, no, no thanks, we're going to just stick with Tomcat. Uh, we could no longer fight the server to meet the deadline. Um, this project actually took quite a long time. Um, we actually landed up slipping. We were supposed to go out in our 11.4 release. Um, but we actually slipped, so we had an 11.5 release about four months after 11.4, and 11.4 is like the orphan release. It has no service packs, no nothing. It just was out there because we're agile and we have to, you know, release when we can, <laughs> even though we've got dates we've got to meet. Uh, <clears throat> so finally, let's talk about the pass architecture. So first and foremost, it's Tomcat. Or initially, it was um, 7.0.42. Our current shipping version is 8.5.11. Um, we um, are going to 8.5.15 in our 11.7.1 uh, release, which will be coming out in the next uh, month or two. Um, we'll extend, uh, but not customize, uh, the core Apache Tomcat server. Um, we um, will support deployment of any you know, compliant web application in Tomcat. And uh, we don't create uh, dependencies um, on our core PaaS server from any of our products. So, for instance, in OpenEdge, when we extend it, we, have to, we had to create a lot of extension points in order to drop stuff in, in order to extend it so that the other groups don't have to worry about um, any of our um, requirements. Uh, we're adding value to standard Tomcat, um, and I hope uh, you'll, uh, you'll agree with me when I uh, show you a little bit about what we've done. We uh, simplified management uh, of server.xml from automation scripts. Um, a lot of our work went into our scripting framework for, for managing our servers, um, and I think it's one of the coolest parts of our, our um, additions to Tomcat. Uh, we have an administrative friendly command line tool for common server tasks, and I'll be showing you that. Uh, full support for Tomcat instances. Um, how many people um, use the instance architecture in Tomcat? Just curious. That, that's one of the things that I, I never knew about um, until we started this project was this whole Tomcat instance architecture. I thought you had a Tomcat server and that was, that was it. But the instance architecture was, was um, a great, um, great feature that allows us to you know, be more like our classic app server and how our customers expect things to work. Um, this is one of our more um, controversial uh, decisions we made. A common location for third-party ISV products and web applications. Uh, we enable the shared loader, and we uh, and we use that to um, in our Catalina Home uh, common lib to include uh, a lot of our uh, a lot of our third-party jars and stuff like that. Uh, this causes problems, um, especially um, if you're trying to deploy standard stuff, uh, standard non-progress um, web applications. I'll get into uh, that in the end. Uh, drop in extensions to customize Tomcat runtime environment. Again, this goes back to the point we can't really create dependencies between our products on this. We wanted a core standard platform. And uh, drop in extensions to customize creation of Tomcat instances. Uh, when you create a PAS OE instance, that's different from creating an instance for some of our other products, and we have uh, specific tailoring that gets called uh, for those um, environments that you can just drop in. And then we, uh, we removed uh, the unsecure um, management in root web application and we distribute those as extras. Uh, we go out um, in two flavors. Uh, we have a um, development version which um, includes a root application that's, um, that's our application that supports, supports our transports and stuff, um, as well as um, everything's open. And then we also have a um, production version which um, locks everything down and everything's disabled by default and you need to go in and turn things on in order to get them to work. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I just said, the predefined security production, great Tomcat features. So some of the um, 
features that we, we've uh, configured in our, um, in our uh, platform is um, the authentication realms, uh, HTTP session management support, Java security manager integration, uh, multiple uh, server instance support. We enabled the f uh, filters for whitelist, blacklist checking in both the IP and, uh, and other uh, valves um, logging. Uh, we um, give you a way of turning on and off logging easily. Uh, the JMX console is um, turned off by default even though uh, uh, you can turn it on and, and use it as normal ways. Uh, we normally recommend you use JMX locally. Uh, we did add full, um, full set of uh, management beans for, for our extensions into Tomcat. Um, we predefined HTTPS, HTTP, and AJP13 connectors. Some are enabled by default, others aren't. Uh, Tomcat single sign-on is, is, um, is configured. Uh, we use a session ID size of 22. Um, not sure why that's important, but. Uh, we include an SSL Java key store with a test um, certificate that's self-signed so that um, in order to you know, test SSL while getting a, a normal certificate, you're, you're good to go out of the box for development. Uh, the web crawler um, valve is, um, is enabled as well as memory leak monitoring. So our extensions to it, uh, we, we created a single scriptable command line utility tool uh, we call TC Manager. Um, the script itself is TC Man for short. Uh, that allows you to do uh, some of the most common server um, administration stuff. Uh, we integrated Spring Security and Spring MVC support into our product. Um, on the open-end side of things, we, we really haven't touched what, what the Spring framework can do in our stuff. Uh, we use it for our REST adapter, but, um, but there's a lot of stuff in there that we, we'd like to take a look at and, uh, and take advantage of in the future. We include the HTTP Commons HTTP client. I know uh, somebody was saying yesterday at the meetup that it would be good if Tomcat just had its own support for this stuff. Uh, we, we included it. Um, we uh, have a Spring Security Authentication. We support Digest File, LDAP, Active Directory, and we're extending that as more, um, as, uh, as um, more requirements come along. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we've externalized um, server.xml values into property files uh, for easy maintenance, and uh, that's one of the things I'll be showing you. Uh, also, uh, we um, created a method for um, externalizing the enabling and disabling of individual server XML features um, so that um, you can uh, do that from a command line. Um, our customers, we don't like them going in and editing XML files by hand, but we can help it. Uh, <clears throat> we included a secure root web application that's just a, a blank web application by default in our core pass server um, if you're doing a specific one for Open Edge, for instance, then it's ours. And then our extras directory contains um, all the uh, things uh, that come with Tomcat plus some other things that, uh, that, um, that we needed. And finally, uh, Windows Server Support, which is actually a lot more difficult than, than I thought other than just running the Tomcat um, 7W or 8W. Uh, we, big environment that we had to set up in order to get that uh, to work. So, yes? Yes. Would it be notifying? Yeah. I mean, so, uh, um, yeah, so one of the things that uh, at least um, normally our, our web applications load and our issues have to have to do with our agent processes and whether you're hooked up to the database. Uh, that's all done sort of through logging. Um, so with a Windows service, you can start up your service, but it may not actually be healthy. Right. And um, again, yeah, we, we, we only recommend using Windows services for production server when things are working right. Um, but yeah, we normally recommend against it because we, we find issues where, where, um, where we lose um, critical error information sometimes. Right. I mean, currently, we are facing the same problem where some of the apps, they may fail uh, to start up as expected, right. but it doesn't reflect back in the Exactly, yeah. Yes. Uh, we, we, we encounter the same issue and haven't got a solution for that. So our uh, PaaS command line tool, TCMAN, um, 
for Unix, we, we support, um, we have to support multiple platforms. We support Windows and Linux, um, as well as um, AIX, HPUX, and Solaris. Um, so for our Unix um, variants, um, it's, it's just a, a shell script. Um, and for Windows, uh, we use PowerShell. Uh, we manage each, independent, each instance independently. Um, and you can manage all instances by, by, by working on the home PaaS instance. Uh, we record our instances in a, in a file in our, our configuration directory so that you do, we have this registration and registration process I'm going to show you. And, um, and each instance is assigned an alias name that we also use for the JVM route for when you're doing clusters. So some of the actions we got, uh, and I'll be showing these. Also, I've got some, uh, some uh, stylish placemats that, uh, that we hand out to our customers uh, that uh, go over some of the command views. And with that, I'm going to switch over to demo mode and show you a little bit about, uh, about our TC Manager script. So this is, uh, this is an environment window um, that sets up our, our, our environment for OpenEdge. And, um, and um, we have a, um, a script called PASMAN that's on the path that just wraps Catalina Home bin TC man. So if I do PASMAN, you get your, you get your standard help screen. You get your standard help screen that shows um, the different, uh, different options that you can do uh, that we, we support. And a, a lot of it, um, some of it requires the Tomcat manager to be installed, which we do for development, but it's not required. So for instance, if I look at what instances I got currently installed, I'll just give it PASMAN instances. And you see I got two instances installed right now. Um, OEAG1 is, um, is our authentication gateway, and, and uh, the interesting thing about that instance is that uh, we deliver it just basically as a zipped up pre-configured instance, since it's uh, a specific um, implementation of a secure token server. Uh, we just, um, Tomcat allows us to generate an instance to zip it up and then we can deploy it on both Unix or Windows and just register it and have it go. OEPAS1 is our standard uh, development instance. So let's, um, let's take a look at, um, at how we create an instance. We got full uh, command line help uh, feature, so create. So when you create an instance, So when you create an instance, you can specify a number of different uh, um, attributes, uh, such as your ports, um, your web apps directory. Um, if you um, are um, the Tomcat Manager application and, and another web application we call OE Manager, which provides a, a JMX or a, a REST interface on top of our JMX beans. Uh, they run using container security, so here we allow you to set the uh, credentials um, at creation time. Uh, one of the things we found was that um, a number of our internal people who put instances up on Amazon for, for development and demo purposes or whatnot, sometimes those machines get stolen if uh, you leave the Tomcat Tomcat defaults in there. <coughs> we also allow you to specify whether it's going to be a development or, or production uh, version of the instance. So uh, let's go through and uh, and create uh, an instance here. So one of the things that uh, we do, do is uh, dash f means uh, let's deploy every, um, we, we allow you to configure your Catalina home instance with a number of web apps and then if you specify the dash f it'll, it'll deploy those web apps along with it other than just the root application. And I'm going to take the um, do verbose uh, output, so it's interesting. I'm just going to take the default ports at this point. I'll give, just give it an alias name, APCON1. So it'll go through and it'll just create a Tomcat instance. And I'll be going into the details of what a Tomcat instance is um, directory-wise, for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Because this is our development server, all our transports are enabled. And everything is, is opened up. Uh, 
Also, we turn off our stuck session valve uh, for a development server because uh, when you're debugging, it's easy to uh, create stuck sessions. So now if I do a pass man instances, You see we now have a new instance, APCon1, that I just created. So let's, uh, let's uh, take a look at um, configuring that. First thing I want to do is I'm going to look at the server.xml file that was created. So this is my Tomcat instance directory going to comp. So one of the uh, things that we do in order to enable this um, scripting of turning features on and off is, um, is we delineate them with, with some, uh, some uh, special, uh, special sauce. So for instance, um, let's take a look at the um, access log feature. So right now our access log is on. You see this XML tag there, and we have our um, access log configured. Um, some of these uh, things have been externalized to property files, uh, such as uh, condition less. So you can then set that in a property file without having to go in and modify your your um, your XML file. So um, let's uh, let's see how we. Uh, configure service, configure features of, of the instance. So Pazman features gives you a, um, oops. gives you a list of features that we, uh, we support and it gives you the uh, current settings of what they're on. So if I want to um, turn off my access log because it's, it's chatty, um, I can do a Pazman feature because we're using instances I got to use uh, my instance uh, syntax which is uh, specified by capital I we give it our instance alias name and then we just do access log so now if we go back to our server.xml file you'll see that it's been modified and if we go down to where our access log was, you'll see that it is now uncommented out. We don't, I mean, it's not rocket science here. We just take off the ending XML tag and, uh, and, uh, and uh, make it a whole comment. Now you're able to turn on and off features easily. So let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, at it running. So after a um, few seconds, it will be up and running. So this is our development server welcome. Hmm. Yeah. It's the wrong port. Eight, ten. This is our uh, our welcome page for our development server. Um, gives you the version of OpenEdge, the version of Tomcat it's running on, and some other information. The PaaS version is the core PaaS version that we're, we're running on, which I talked about. Um, also, we install the uh, Tomcat manager by default for for a um, development server. And as you see, uh, for a development server, we have a number of um, web applications installed. Um, our root application is our, our main uh, one that supports our clients, uh, Tomcat Manager. OEDBG um, is, um, is a debugger, is um, used for debugging our, our, um, our stuff, um, and was our first um, foray into the world of uh, WebSockets. Um, it's actually pretty cool. 
Uh, we actually had to do WebSockets in native code too, so we were able to find this uh, library called libnopole that uh, they were able to set up communications using WebSockets between Tomcat and our agent process. And finally, our OE Manager um, web application, which is, like I said, a REST interface on top of our JMX beams. So back to the presentation. I'm going to stop the server. So Tomcat instance architecture is what made this um, possible for us to do and is, um, is an awesome feature that I, I highly recommend to everybody. Um, basically, we have a runtime configuration that shares common libraries and scripts with our home server installation. Um, each instance is a full Tomcat server process um, use it with its own set of ports. Um, we offer, you know, it gives you the lightweight expansion of the number of servers for load balancing and scaling. Uh, can have its own configuration or obviously set its own deployed web applications. So that's like what I showed you when we used the Dash F, we copy over some pre-configured stuff. You can also deploy your own web applications into any instance. It can have its own shared web application libraries, which we use heavily. It could be pre-configured and packaged as a deployable unit um, in ISV and on-premise installations. Um, a lot of our customers, um, and that's exactly what we took advantage of for our secure token service. Uh, lifetime can spam multiple home paths, uninstalls, and installs, and this is um, this is um, a great feature for for us that I'll be getting into some more detail on. Um, when you update your home instance, you end up updating all instances because we are using the shared loader. So when we have any um, any library updates um, by copying them into the home instance, they automatically get picked up by by any uh, instances out there, and um, and basically. Um, any shared libraries that are in the instance itself um, don't have any effect on any other instances or your home instance. So let's uh, look at the um, at the uh, the instance runtime. So DLC is our is um, is where our, our product gets installed to, um, and our home instance is found under servers paths OE. So when you create an instance, uh, we create a, a basically a directory uh, set of directories. Um, in where you tell it to. We then copy over uh, a number of scripts that get copied and tailored and tailored um, basically setting up Catalina Home and Catalina Base environment variables. We do a full copy of all our properties. We copy over, oops, copy over our, our um, root.war and any other web apps that you may want to do. And then we do a full copy of any um, stuff that's specific to our product. So at runtime, what happens is um, you start up your instance. Uh, Tomcat Live and, and, and the bin get, get used from the, um, from the home instance, as well as um, our shared loader, which is um, all the stuff in common Live. The stuff that gets picked up from the instance are all the properties, uh, the logging, uh, the temp work, um, the web apps that are deployed in there, as well as the open edge stuff. So when you do this, um, you create a number of instances off, off your home directory. And then you know easily put up an HTTPD in front of it, uh, support clustering. Um, also, you can deploy w web applications into your home instance that get copied over, or you can deploy them directly into a specific instance. Also, there's our pre-configured instances that you can just unzip and, and register. So when we upgrade instances, and this was the the um, it wasn't as simple as, as, as this slide leads you to believe that we, we learned when we moved from Tomcat 7 to Tomcat 8 or from Spring, two, Spring Security 2 to Spring Security 3. Um, but basically, you would install a new version. For instance, if we were going from Open Edge 11.6 to 11.7, you'd install 11.7. You would unregister all your instances uh, on your 11.6. You would register them with your 11.7 instance, and it would pick up all the new stuff as long as none of the um, configuration files have changed. Unfortunately, that's, uh, that's not always the case, so we have to do a little extra work in that, that regard, we found out. You can then um, undeploy your, your older version, um, and you're good to go. So the next uh, thing that we, we did was Spring Security. Um, it's a big, um, 
big thing for our customers um, moving forward, um, especially given uh, running on the cloud and all those other uh, things that are happening today. So originally, um, because we don't create the applications, our application partners do, uh, we, our use of Spring Security have to be based on external XML files and not, and our customers don't write Java code, so, so um, Java annotations are, are not, um, not gonna work for them. So in our original configuration, you required to, we required our customer to manually edit XML files with hard-coded values. Um, and because of that, uh, we can't update those files ourselves directly. Um, also, there was a ton of files and, and a lot of them contained similar information. So for instance, we had form local, form LDAP, form AD, you know, all those different types of configurations um, that, that really complicated things. Uh, we had no GUI tools to simplify the administration of these files. And the, the number of files is very large and, and would only get larger as we had support for other things like OAuth and things like that. And there's a high um, maintenance um, because uh, the, the properties are, are, lo are specific to web applications and they weren't shared among multiple web applications. And for instance, one of our requirements is that multiple web applications um, can be uh, basically created as a, thought of as a, as a single application. So in 11.6, uh, what our customers would have to do, they'd edit web.xml and select one of 12 files we provided, uh, depending on their security, uh, uh, security uh, requirements, you know, such as form local and what have you. Uh, they'd edit the XML file for each user account source. Um, where are they getting their information from? And they also edit the XML file for URL access um, for our web and rest and web transports. Um, our APSV transport, which is our app server protocol, and SOAP uh, just use basic authentication. So for release testing, you go in and you edit the web, that XML file, and you select your uh, test file and logins. Um, and the real issue was upgrade and patches. Uh, when we went from Spring Security 2 to Spring Security 3, that required a change in the XML namespace in all those XML files. Um, so you cannot take a, a web application uh, that we created in 11.6 and deployed to 11.7 without um, modifying that. Um, nothing else changed, just that stupid namespace. <laughs> uh, so for 11.7, what we did was we, we separated um, the configuration from the XML. So we created a property file, uh, much like we did with, um, with a lot of the Tomcat properties and externalized it. And, we, uh, and for your um, URL um, access uh, controls, uh, we uh, use a CSV file um, to get those out of the um, out of the XML. So now you go in and you edit the um, user accounts, uh, you edit the property file for the user account source and test accounts. And for upgrades and patches, we have free control over overriding those XML files because they're pretty much static, um, and it just picks up the stuff in the properties. So in order to um, turn on security. Um, there's basically two properties that you have to, um, to set, um, and then there's more properties depending on your specific situation. But we have a login model. Um, by default, it's anonymous, but then you select whether you're using basic form. Container or single sign-on. And then we have an auth manager, uh, which is uh, local x local LDAP OE realm, uh, which, is, um, which is a bridge into um, our user's own homegrown security um, account information, and then Active Directory. So if we look at um, if we look at that, this is our um, this is our development um, environment. It's based on Eclipse, and when you create a um, create a, um, a web application, we we have our directories here. Uh, looks very familiar with our web inf, and our OABL security properties file. Um, is where you go in, it's very well documented, and you go in and you just, you set your properties. So for instance, our auth manager is local and our model is anonymous. If I wanted to enable this for form, all I have to do is just change that to form. And then we have our CSV file, which is where you put in your, um, your URLs and your, um, your access controls, as well as, um, as, well as um, roles and stuff like that. So if we were to um, take a look at this real quick, 
do have some time. I'm going to start up my server here. And if I um, hit my uh, sec test is the um, is the web application I, I gave it when I created it. Web is our web transport, and then hello is my web handler in this simple example. Um, this is just our default um, hello world when you create a, a web application. Um, so if, to enable security, all I need to do is go in and change my property file to form from anonymous. I'll save it. And uh, server will get republished. Now one, one issue that uh, that we did find in, in 11.7, which was just released, is that unfortunately the development environment doesn't reload the, the context. So I have to do that manually. And I give it my uh, web application. I have to give it the uh, Tomcat Manager password. Sec test is my web application. So, and all that does is it uh, it basically calls the um, we have a little uh, utility that uh, calls the Tomcat Manager via HTTP um, and does a reload on it. So now, if I go to uh, to my web application, boom, I get my form login screen. Now I, I, I have um, authenticated access. So some of the challenges that we've we've come on come across. Um, so if our classic app server is thought of like this. You know, it's very nice, relaxing. Um, you know, kind of tra kind of tranquil. While our um, Progress applications of open edge can consider this. You know, it's um, we have no control over things like you know the pool water temperature or anything like that. But it has cool water slides and it's a lot more fun. So some of the um, challenges was you know we no longer control the environment we run in. Um, our our um, our company has a, has a compatibility um, compatibility uh, mandate of we we support one major version behind and one major version. Um, forward. So a lot of our customers are still on version 10 of our platform, so that means you know we're supporting 20 years of legacy code from back when we delivered 9 in 1998 to current 11.7 for those, those customers. Um, we have to uh, be a little more, um, it's a little more challenging in order for us to, um, to support this, uh, this here, and we're running into things like, you know, Updating Spring Security requires, you know, updated namespaces and things like that. But uh, it's well worth the uh, the challenges um, to, um, to to allow us to deliver this product. Um, logging logging is an issue for us. Um, as I said, we 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 had a requirement that multiple web applications we wanted to log to the same log file because they were the same ABL application. Um, our core path server ships with Java, Java Commons logging um, included. Uh, but we chose to go with logback in SL SLF for J, and that does cause some issues, especially in the bridges, because a lot of third-party products, um, you know, use commons logging. We needed to include the bridge. Uh, so, for instance, in our Corticom product, which uses commons logging, if we include the bridge in their stuff, then it causes issues with their logging that doesn't work. Um, so that's a jar library hell. Um, even though we do tell our customers that, they, yeah, sure, they can deploy any Tomcat, you know, any. Tomcat uh, compatible web application into our server. Uh, chances are, um, when they actually start doing that, we're going to run into these compatibility issues that we're going to have to work through with them. Um, 
you know, it's not the end of the world, and, and I, it's, it'll be easily solved, but it will require some manual, um, manual integration. Um, you know, multiple products installing their own private version of the same file is, is, um, is problematic, um, depending on how your class loaders um, pick it up. Um, you could be, you know, using an older version of a, of a third-party library that, um, that don't work with your application. And finally, you know, applications that store their temp work data inside the web application is a problem for us. So if we um, look at uh, where we were, this is our um, classic app server. And what we delivered with Tomcat is um, a single application server. We moved all our servlets inside our OEABL.war, our transports of web, AIA, SOAP, and, and REST. Um, our OE manager war provides our REST API. The broker process we had in our classic um, application server is now a lightweight session manager because we no longer have to manage connections. Uh, Tomcat does that for us. And we replaced our single agent process with a multi-session agent uh, that can support multiple ABL sessions in a single um, OS process. So uh, for more information, if you're interested in actually playing around with the TC Manager framework, and, um, and really it is just Tomcat under the covers, um, you can download our, um, our classroom edition. Um, it includes a fully functional PAS OE development server, and that's the URL for that. Um, we also um, have other products that you may be interested in, Cortecon and Rollbase. Those are the URLs. Uh, one final thing I want to show before I wrap up is um, if you do grab the um, grab the classroom edition, we do include a paths running.txt um, with, with Tomcat, just like running.txt, which shows all the modifications that, that we made to Tomcat, um, such as, um, you know, uh, turning on things, moving things into the property files, um, pretty much anything you want to know how we go from a downloading a standard Tomcat to turning it into um, paths um, is included here, and it's mostly up to date. There may, not, there may be some things, you know, a little out of date, like uh, it still says Tomcat 7 there, even though we're on Tomcat 8 uh, for the, the Windows stuff. And then we uh, talk about um, the extras where you can find things that both come with Tomcat that aren't installed by default, as well as some other, other things. So with that, I am done. Any questions? Yes. So, uh, you mentioned about the debatable and potentially non reversible deployment scenario of sharing the libraries across the Yes. So, like, apart from ver version conflicts, so do you see any more challenges in that? And, I mean, you said it is all the problems. Right. It comes with its own problems. But then, yeah. why, what made. So, so our, you know, our biggest problem has to do with that we, we ran into was the SLF for. Um, for J Bridge for Java Commons logging, like I said, that that has adverse effects on other other things, um, other products that use Commons logging. Another thing is, you, um, we we need to make sure that all our, our libraries have version numbers in in their file names, because uh, what we do when we we go and update, um, install a service pack or whatnot, uh, we copy these new versions over. Then we go through and we have to we look at all the file names and we take all the ones that are older and we move them into an archive directory so that we don't have multiple versions of the same third-party library there. So there's a lot of management tasks involved in, in having to manage that properly. The ability to be able to install a service pack and have all our customers' deployed instances update to new versions without touching them. That's, that's the big thing for us. Yes? No, uh, so, yeah. Right. You just, you say, congratulations, you've got the new version, but you're not probably QA in their products, so you might be replacing a library that they're relying on. Well, yeah, our, our customers are not Java programmers. Uh, they're ABL programmers. So they're running in our environment, so we do. So their applications are actually your applications. Exactly. I mean, 
I, I kind of like to think of it as, as that old BASF commercial. You know, we don't make the applications, we make the applications possible. Our customers are, are basically application partners who, who have been on our platform for a number of years and, and sell our applications to their customers. And that's one of the reasons why, as a, as a 4GL company, uh, we're still in business uh, uh, because of that, uh, that lock-in and inertia. Gotcha. So you're actually essentially simplifying the upgrade of not only the application server, but also the applications you provide. Correct, yeah. They're, they're, Exactly, and our customers aren't calling those libraries directly. Our code internally is what's using those, those, um, that functionality uh, for the most part um, in, in, as far as open edge is concerned. Um, so, so yeah, um, we're, we, if, if a customer did install a third party web application that we didn't know about, you know, they very well could run into difficulties with versioning, but I think we, we can figure out ways to, to help them around that. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. So the um, so the, uh, an older version of the slides are, are already uploaded to the Apache uh, Apache Con site, and I will be updating them with with this version, which I've been working on uh, since uh, since the last version. So uh, that's a good question. I'm I'm glad somebody asked that because um, I was prepared to answer that. Uh, it's none of it's open source. But we would not be adverse to donating it to Apache um, should um, the Tomcat community think that it would be useful. Now, the one caveat with that is that I have no actual resources to devote to that process. But we would be happy to work with people who, who do have the time and resources to make that possible. Now, our TC Manager stuff um, is really Tomcat. I mean, it's open edge agnostic. It's um, the core, our core server, although it's tied to a particular version of Tomcat, um, is basically only Tomcat. Um, we just basically work around the edges, you know, re replacing uh, hard-coded values with property values and, and all that stuff. But it's definitely something we'd be, be willing to work with somebody on if um, the community thought it was valuable. The spring security stuff, that's really specific to our, our use cases and probably would not translate well um, general purpose-wise. Yes? Uh, basically, the changes in server.xml were, were big. Um, you know, the whole connector architecture and stuff like that. Um, you know, ri originally, you know, we had, you know. But, uh, but nothing that was uh, insoluble given. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's just basically learning what, what the changes were. Um, I don't know if there's a good document on, on that uh, process. Um, I, I did not find it. Yeah. But uh, that, that, that would also be, be helpful if you, if you knew exactly the, the types of things that changed. Uh, for instance, like um, the, um, the scanning of, of, of libraries, that's a little problematic because we use the shared loader and we have a ton of libraries in there. I didn't realize that that property name changed from 7 to 8.5. <laughs> so I, I was running around, you know, it's, it's hard enough to dump out, to get the logger to dump out what, what jars it's having problems with that it's doing. Uh, once I figure that out, then, then I go in and change it, nothing happens. So it's stuff like that. I mean, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing uh, earth shaking and uh, certainly uh, not, uh, not something I'm complaining about given the value that Tomcat provides us. Anything else? Yes. A lot of questions are coming. <coughs> this question was so much uh, tied, so much technical, so much tied to Tomcat and everything that at least I, we could go with it. But it, but this guy is looking at the title, so we are glad we attended this. <coughs> I mean, the title of the session suggested it, it is going to be a generic talk, but we never right, to right. be so relevant to it. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay anything else? Okay, great. Thank you for coming. <laughs>